Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I have the opportunity to work on a Daiwa Saltist reel. And this one is the LD30, LD being a lever drag reel. That's the one that's controlled by the, the lever here. As you put it in free spool, it spins freely. And as you increase the tension on it, well, you, uh, you lock in that drag plate. This one's awfully tight here. There you go, that's better. But we got a wine going on there, so we're going to see if we can't take care of it. Uh, my experience with uh, these reels is that when they get dry, they start to get whiny. So we're going to uh, show you how to take this reel apart, how to service it, how to get it back out there and keep it fishing for years to come. We're going to start by removing the handle and the exterior pieces. As we do that, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. If you do subscribe to my channel, please use the notification button. That'll let you know when I'm posting the uh, how-to videos as well as other videos that I post on the channel. And we'll have an opportunity to see whether the, uh, the video appeals to you and whether you want to watch it. Uh, I do all kinds of videos. I uh, work on lever drags here today, saltwater trolling lever drag. Tomorrow it may be a, a vintage spinning wheel followed by the latest uh, bait caster. So there's all kinds of things going on there. And uh, if you can uh, uh, subscribe, you'll get a notification as to which ones you may want to choose to use. We have a cover plate here. This is important right now. What I'm about to tell you is take pictures along the way. Uh, you're going to see right here we have this circular spring with the lever. And there's a spring loaded clutch right under here. And you want to note how that loads up. And you also want to be careful with it in that it's very easy to have that spring dislodge and when it dislodges well it becomes problematic to find it so you want to do your best to avoid that and what you're going to do here is you're going to remove that plate it's almost like a c-clip and that spring and if you get nervous with that go ahead and use something like a, a little uh, pliers here or something to, to grab that spring so that it doesn't shoot and then to pull it out of the cavity and place it in the bin. Once you do that you can remove the clip. Take a picture there. You want to know what the upside of the clip is in the down. You want to note the position of that um, side clip here. Remember when you go to remount that, um, that nut there has several sides to it, six sides. And if you, uh, you can probably put that release point in any, any of those positions. You want to make sure you put it in the one how it came off, which was this way with the inside button locking. Once that ring is off now, you can remove the, the device that's going to lock in the two speeds. Yes, this is a two speed wheel. I think that's going to be a, a 12 millimeter. It is. Now we're going to see if we can't remove that section now. And this should be another spring driven piece here. So be careful with this as you unload. It's going to lock in just like that. And again, take a picture of that just in case something goes wrong. And then put it into a parts tray. I use the bottom of a fast food container to locate my parts. And that way when it's time to reinstall, well, I know where they are. All right, we can remove the handle now. And it's another good point to note, underneath here, in that cavity, is another spring. Well, if you're not paying attention to it, it's real easy to turn the reel upside down or something, have the spring bounce out, and then, well, you got a problem. Also note that it's kind of a double spring. You have a wide opening up top here and a narrow opening below. So that's the orientation when it goes to get reinstalled. It doesn't hurt to just take the spring and you can put it with that same part. That's how it's going to work when it's time to reinstall. We can remove the outer shield then. That's got a lot of dirt on it. And so when we do our, our service and repair of these reels, a lot of it has to do simply with cleaning and parts inspection and lubrication. Uh, we got a wine going on in this one. And that probably is saying a little bit of all things, right? It's probably saying it's dirty. <laughs> It needs the cleaning and uh, it needs some lubrication. 
hopefully there's nothing broken in there. That would also be a reason why these parts might grind a little bit. Well, this is a, um, a, a coated handle. It's got wear on it and it's got some uh, corrosion on it, probably from the salt waters. And uh, that's a good uh, reason to go ahead and wash your wheels after every use. Hose them down with fresh water and uh, that'll kind of help you for years to come in terms of getting this stuff off and preventing the corrosion if you're fishing in a salt water environment. I'm going to remove the adjuster now. Again, pictures, right? We got a lot of dirt in this one. It tells me that it hasn't been serviced in a while. I use a cotton swab to get inside there to get that dirt out. And I'm going to notice when I do that that there is a little C-clip that's going to hold that spring. It's a circle clip, it's not actually a C-clip. But this is riding underneath there. And it's going to, going to hold the spring and keep it from spinning. So just you just want to note these things as you're, you're working on this because it's real easy to miss these pieces and parts and then wonder why you don't have the uh, part working properly. I'm going to take the three of those, stack them as they came out, and put that in there. All right, the, the inner part of the lever arm then is just a simple metal plate. There's usually a, um, a little washer on this side of it. There is. That's going to provide the slide for your adjuster. And that would go in here. And then you saw on the back side of this, and we got a lot of dirt and I think that's probably what's causing all of this commotion here and this uh, kind of noise that was in that testing. And this is a typical setup for a lever drag. You've got two what I'll call peaks. They're on the back of part of the swing arm. Remember our spring is going to nest in this side. You got the two peaks. On this side you'll have the corresponding valleys. You'll see them here. Well when those two peaks are nested in the valleys, one here and one here, it's in free spool because there's no tension or no pulling going on. You'll notice that there's a ramp that comes up on both sides and as you turn your lever like this, it's walking the studs up the ramp. When it walks the studs up the ramp, it pulls your spool uh, towards it. And when it pulls the spool towards it, you're engaging the uh, drag washer and the pressure plate. You'll see that in just a moment. We'll do that here. Okay, I think these two stops are meaningless. So I think we can leave those screws in, but we have four screws on the outside we have no screws in the back. And so I'm going to grab a flat bladed screwdriver. And you want to get the flat bladed screwdriver that matches the slot in the reel. This is a little bit concerning here. This screw was not down tight. So that could be because of boat vibration, or that could be because, uh, well, somebody didn't do a good job the last time this was open. My guess is this has been a few years since this reel has been serviced. And this really could be as, uh, I haven't taken a, a look, I probably should have looked before I opened this one up. This reel could be 10 or 15 years old. This is one of the, the pioneers of the low profile or, or the small profile reel that was designed because braid came in. And when braid came available, you could put a lot more line on a smaller spool. And so folks went to the, um, the lower, the smaller chassis or the ultralight chassis, if you will, for these lever drag wheels. And they obsoleted a lot of the older wheels. You can think back into the 60s, early 60s, all of those things were big, big wheels. Now they're not so much. All right, I think this should just come off now. It does. So we've kind of showed that we do not need to remove the two stops. Here's your setup on the back. It's a two gear setup. We have a pressure plate up top that, uh, as we mentioned, the spool will get pulled into this pressure plate when the spool gets pulled into that pressure plate, that's what causes the, the friction of the device. Underneath that, we have a click ratchet. Notice the orientation on that. It's uh, kind of like a sawtooth going 
are pointed left. I'm going to wipe those down. Wipe the surface back here. And these are always a little bit difficult for me to align because you've got this uh, anti-reverse dog that's got to work its way in there, but we'll play around with that later. It's a two-gear setup for your pinion gear. That's because it's a double drive. So it's going to ride like that. And you're going to notice this one is going to sit in here. There's a square that's going to cause it to seat that way. Let's put those off to the side for a moment and let's get that main gear out then. First thing you want to do here is to clean up the case. We have a lot of uh, old grease that's spun off to the side. So let's go ahead and do that. I use a penetrating oil here. I use that as a degreaser. I want to get as much of that old stuff out of there as I can. I like to use the least abrasive approach where possible. And so I'm just using a paper towel here. It doesn't seem like that grease is really dried on there. And that does look like the penetrating oil has done its job in terms of, uh, of getting that done. Well, I think when we go to install, we're probably going to have to remove this um, anti-reverse dog to do that. So let's just do that right now. Let's not even think about it for later. Very small screws. That's one of the reasons why I put my pieces into a parts tray. Those, you leave those on the bench, you're not going to find them more times than you are. And then, well, that's going to lead to a lot of frustration trying to find out where did they go. All right, that's a cover. Normally, I would tell you to take pictures of it. You want to know the orientation. In this case, it's pretty straightforward. You have a notch here and a notch to the pin there. You also have tapered uh, screw holes there, so it's... It's kind of, I don't want to say foolproof, I've seen all kinds of things come in, but let's just say it's not that, uh, not that hard to remember how to get that aligned. These are your traditional forked uh, anti-reverse uh, dogs. We have a main bearing. A lot of dirt on the shaft, that could be a reason why this is doing what it's doing. Once we have the uh, gears out, Let's go ahead and grab the handle. Use that as a wrench. We're going to put that on the one side. And then I think this is a reverse threaded nut that's going to hold this assembly on. So, yeah, it is. Turn it away from you or clockwise to remove the center insert. Then we should be able to remove the gear for cleaning underneath. sure you clean both sides of that. And then check the teeth on this. Check all the teeth, make sure that they're clean. These are, they're clean and grease free. If you had an issue with that, go ahead and get a hard bristle brush, like a toothbrush, or in this case just a, a regular dollar store hard brush and pull that through. Okay, so we're all clean on this. That handle can go back in the tray. You can go ahead and pull off the main gear. Clean the back of that. We have a bearing here you can oil. Remember, we heard a lot of squeaking going on there. I think probably from that, one of those. Remember how these were nested. Now this goes in next. And when you go to second gear, this little uh, cross pin is what's going to push out and engage the second gear. So it nests inside the first one. And then when you push it in, it's going to grab the second one here. All right. I'm just going to grab a little bit of grease. I'm going to use fishing wheel grease. And we're going to put some grease onto the teeth of that main gear. 
Now this is where taking pictures is helpful. If you had taken pictures along the way, you will see the orientation of the gears because we've got a lot of pieces moving around here, right? And uh, you don't want to get them too messed up. Let's go put that second gear on. Same thing, make sure you get some good grease on there. I'm going to take that washer that goes on next and the cap. And because this was a reverse thread coming off, well, you have to turn it counterclockwise to seat it. Just take your time with it, make sure that you do not cross thread it. There we go. Tighten that down by hand. I actually have a 12 millimeter nut here. Socket. Tighten that up. Just like that. Oiled the bearing, greased the gears after cleaning. This part can go back in. There's a bearing in the case here. Again, you can oil both sides of that, front and back. They're shielded, they're not sealed. So that whole piece can go back in now. Just like that. The top kind of popped out, not a problem. And you have a couple of different ways you can go right now. And the way I'm going to go is I'm going to go ahead and reinstall the handle side of this just so that uh, we can take care to get the pieces out of the box and do this while it's still fresh in our memory. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to grab that little shield that goes next. And we're going to take the carrier. Remember what we said about the, the carrier there? I'm sorry, it's the handle next. Then the carrier, and we said the carrier was facing to the outside. We're gonna, before we do that, we're gonna load the spring in. We're gonna tighten down the handle nut. Do this by hand as well. And then tighten it down with the wrench once you've completed that. Now we have our offset for the little trim ring. And you got to align the trim ring with these two holes because that's where it's going to be. Almost there. Got to play around with it a little bit. Okay. Okay, if you recall, the plunger is up top coming down, so you need the, the carrier to be the inverse of that. Next up then is that clip. And that clip is going to provide that little cavity here for the spring. And we need to compress the spring. And seat that into the cavity. 
That may take a little bit of doing, but that's the way that it does line up. I find that if you lift that whole assembly up a little bit and kind of work gingerly with it, you'll be okay. Look for the tag here and the tag in that shift lever and then seat this over it. Just like that. Now we can take that section here with the two screws that's going to hold this entire piece down. I'll remove one of the screws so I have a visual into where that is. And underneath here, it's a going to line up. There's a little bit of dirt, so I'm going to clean that up first. But you're lining up you need to find the slot for the bar to ride through. And then simply it should lay on top there. Just going to check to make sure that I got the visual so that these screws go in easily. And that's going to be the mounting for the bottom side of the reel. Give this a test. Push in. Make sure that it locks. Now you've got your gear extended. And then just trip it back, make sure it comes out. There you go. All right, Let's, uh, we can actually do the rest of the inside of this. Once you've loaded that pinion gear in, do the same thing here. Inspect this one. Let's get some grease on it. It's all cleaned. And then load the second one in with that square side facing out. Next up then is your anti-reverse assembly. Clean all the pieces and parts for that. Remember what we said, the sawtooth were coming at us, which means when you go to load this dog, it needs to load like that. And then what you want to do here now is target that dog for the stud. When you've seated that dog, go ahead and get your tie down clamp. Put that over. Make sure that it seats properly so you can hold the dog in. And we'll get those two little screws that belong in there. We know where they were. They were in the parts tray for safekeeping. They are little. They tend to run away. Take care of them when you, when you remove these. So if you have any questions on this reel or any reel while I'm putting this together, if you uh, leave them in the comments section, I'll try and answer those for you. Maybe it's a question about lever drive reels in general. Maybe it's a question about this particular reel. Maybe it's got nothing to do with either. Maybe you're working on a reel and you're stuck. Uh, leave the question in there. I'll try to answer that for you. That's the best way to reach me is the comment section. I know there's a phone number on the card on the... Uh, the back end of this and uh, that's probably the worst way to reach me but there is a phone number there but when I'm doing videos and when I'm involved in uh, working on reels repairing them or tuning them up or doing whatever I'm doing in the shop itself it's very difficult for me to, to answer those questions on the phone all right this next one is kind of the hardest part of this hold on install it's lining this up so that you can mesh in that gear, the pressure plate. You kind of have to leave the equal sides spaces so that that square can come into the top of it. And then holding it firm, you can see if you've got it in or not. And I think I pretty much got this one in. Yep, I do. All right, that's the uh, that's the gear side of this. The last thing I want to do is just put a little bit of oil onto the bearing here because we know that they're all squeaking. 
I'm just going to set this off to the side and hopefully I don't disturb that, uh, that anti-reverse setup there. All right, let's go over to the spool side. That's what's left in this. I'm going to pull the spool out. I have problems with uh, braided line on these things that almost always gets trapped in the spool. So I'm going to just go ahead and put a rubber band on that to, to hold that tight because I've been there too many times where these things have not gone well. Notice on the back end here we have a uh, pin. That pin is going to seat into the back. I'm going to remove that right now. Put that in my tray. I grab a paper towel and mop up here. And we have a set on the back here. We have a spring on the front. Remove the spring. It's another good place to take pictures. We have a bearing underneath here, which will get um, uh, oiled in a moment. We have a, uh, a drag washer, and with the drag washer, I can see all the cross hatching. So the drag washer is in good condition. What you want to do is you want to take a hard brush, and just like this, brush through that, just to remove any dirt or any debris that may be in there. Now, if you can't see the cross hatching, you need to replace that uh, that drag washer. Let's turn ourselves to the back end of this. There's going to be a bearing under here that we're going to want to service. And again, we got these relatively small screws. I'm going to let them come on my table first. And this, once we get this cap off, you should be able to, to take the rest of this assembly off. Sometimes you'll find these caps are held in by retention rings, sometimes they're held in by pins, there's all kinds of different ways to hold them in, but uh, this is what we wanted to get to here. We've got the bearing on the shaft, we've got some tension washers underneath that, that's about the flexi flexibility or sensitivity of that uh, lever drag itself, but you wanted to get here to oil this bearing, so let's do that. The rest of this, you just want to make sure you have a clean case, which we do. Let's come up top then and we'll put the oil on the bearing on the inside of this. And then it's just simply reinsert. When I'm reinserting, I just knock that bearing off. That's okay. I'll go ahead and put that back in. Let's hold this firm here underneath. We're just going to want to line up the carrier case with the screw holes. And we want to take those three small screws that we put into our tray, get them started in here to tie down that clip. That's one, two more to go. So these are not particularly hard reels to service. There is that trick with that uh, anti-reverse ratchet there. But if you just take your time and have patience, generally you'll be able to service this one with both of these. And once you understand the principles of drag reels that are driven by the levers, uh, then it's fairly easy. It's somewhat uncomplicated, although this one has the dual drag in it, or the dual speed in it. All right, we just want to press down on this bearing. It became unseated. Just like that, we have the spring. Whatever you do, do not forget that spring. That's where all of your tension is going to come from in the lever drag itself. In the back end of the case, you don't need to do anything there. There's no moving parts other than the click. You can put some oil on the click. You want to reinstall the pin. Remember, the pin, when we put it in, looked like a uh, comma. It was only uh, one side, and it was facing down. So when you insert, push it all the way down to the one side so that it kind of looks like that. And you're going to 
visually line that up to reinstall, but before we do that, I noticed this case could use a little bit of cleaning, and there's no better time to do that than right now. I'm going to use Penrod and Real Cleaner on the scrubby pad, and that should help to get rid of most of the dirt and that that's accumulated inside the reel here. It gets thrown off from the line when you're reeling in, and uh, it's a nice, easy way to get it done. It's a cleaner and a wax. And uh, that certainly makes it look a lot better than it was. Take your axle shaft now. You've got to do a visual on this one. But generally speaking, you can get that. And check to make sure that all of the seams are nice and tight. And we're kind of rolling the other way now, aren't we? Let's get one of these screws in to take the pressure off so you don't have to worry about holding all of it with your hand. Pick the top one because I still have the pressure on the case. You don't want to release the pressure at this point. And then generally what I like to do is, is go to the opposite corner for the pressure. So let's go to the low position. And let's go across town. Kind of going northeast, southwest. Now I'll come back and do the other one, then we'll show you how to set the, the free spool piece there. And uh, I'm ready to give this one a test and go. Fourth one in. So right now we should have a reel that's in free spool because, well, there's no tension on this and it should spin. And boy, does that spin nicely. That's kind of what these reels are known for. All right. Next up then we got that hard washer that goes behind our lever drag arm. And when you set these now, you want to set these in the free spool mode. If you've got them anywhere other than free spool, uh, you're not going to have any success whatsoever in terms of getting this up. There's a five-sided nut that this is going to mount over, and you want to align that and position it to the off side here. If you're not over the nut, it doesn't matter what you do next. over then you have that ramp so what you're trying to do here is you're trying to nest this into the ramp okay I think we got it there we have our spring and adjuster assembly that comes in next you got to keep equal tension on it as you go to seat this. And this does require a little bit of hand strength there to get it done correctly. Tighten it down. There you hear that little click going. And let's make sure we're in free spool. Now let's try to move the lever. Yeah, see how we've started to engage it? It stopped it immediately. So we are in drive mode. And you can test now. Okay, when you're testing, uh, we don't have it adjusted enough. Don't adjust here. Bring it back to free spool. Tighten it down a little bit. Test your free spool. Drive next. Oh, still, uh, first strike is still a little bit interesting. But we are full, full down now. I can't move that. So that's properly adjusted. What we're finding that that tink, tink, tink is, is the, um, the anti-reverse. That's what's hitting every click, 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 click. That's what's going on there. Let's make sure we have the second gear. Push that button in. We've got that. Trip it out. There you go. Okay. That is your Saltist Daiwa LD30. That's how you take this wheel apart, how you service it, and how you get it ready to go fishing again. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you did, please like the video, and again, please subscribe if you'd like to learn more about how to repair and service reels, in addition to a little bit on the, the reels' histories, and why they were made, how they're made, how they're used, and so on. It would be appreciated. I'm just going to check that click. Yep, we have that click. All right, so to our first responders and essential personnel, 
Thank you for everything it is that you do to keep us safe. To everyone, have a great day. I wish you good luck fishing. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle.